Friday on Knight Rider. Nobody move! A jewel heist takes Michael on a pressing engagement through wine country. It's a longer jump than you think. Knight Rider, Friday. Production 58603, The Ice Bandits. This episode originally aired on NBC Sunday night, 8 p.m. on October 7th, 1984. It was written by Gerald Sanford and George Fennedy under the original working title of Night of a Thousand Diamonds. This episode was the 44th episode to air, but the 46th episode to be produced. So The Ice Bandits, believe it or not, was actually filmed right before Night of the Drones. The synopsis reads as follows. Michael and Kid go deep into the heart of wine country when a pair of robbers steal some diamonds earmarked for a foundation auction. Now, as I said, this episode was filmed right before Night of the Drones, and we actually have a uh, something really cool to show you that I don't think anyone's really seen before. This is a memo from unit production manager Ron Martinez. A number of you guys know Ron personally. He's an awesome guy. Um, to the crew of Knight Rider regarding the filming of this episode and Night of the Drones. Because if you remember, they actually filmed not only Night of the Drones on location, but the Ice Bandits too. So Night of the Drones was filmed in San Francisco. The Ice Bandits was filmed uh, in Napa, in the Napa wine country area. So um, I'm going to show you this memo, which is really kind of cool to see. So dated July 17th, 1984, which was um, the actual start of the filming for the ice bandits so here we go the next two episodes of night rider will be shot on location in northern california i hope the following information will assist you in preparing for the approximately three and a half weeks of shooting on location so then it talks about um production 58603 which is the ice bandits as we just said um will be shot uh tuesday and wednesday on local locations so those first two days is when they filmed um the los angeles locations like uh the chase with the uh, bikers and the uh, diamond auction location and Jody's apartment at the very beginning. Those were all filmed in Los Angeles. Then you'll see here the trucks uh, will leave for Northern California in the morning of Thursday the 19th. Um, and it looks like the some of the crew stayed behind on that day to continue filming in Los Angeles while some of the other crew members went up to Napa to get ready to set up for filming up there. So you can see here it talks about the flights, when they're arriving, where the crews will be housed. And um, so while shooting the Ice Bandits, the crew will be staying at the Dry Creek Inn. And there's the information. And... Um, then we come down here, talks about the weather, and then they're going to film, they're going to finish filming the Ice Bandits on Tuesday, July 24th, and spend the night in Sonoma. And then they'll check out the 25th bus to San Francisco and begin work immediately on production 58621, which is Night of the Drones. And then page two here talks about the weather in San Francisco, places to eat. Um, they'll be filming until approximately August 9th. I hope this information will be helpful to you. I'm sure we're looking forward to a great shoot up north, Ron Martinez. So isn't that cool? A uh, little memo going out to the crew. All right. So again, this is part of that early filming of this episode that was in Los Angeles. This is on Boyd Street and Omar Street in Los Angeles, California. This was the location of the Diamond Exchange. We see um, Kit driving up this road here. And if you look, this building and some of these high rises are all still there it was panned in kind of like that so this building right here is this building here and a lot of those towers are still there this other one you can see there's been a bunch of growth in the last 35 years there 
All right, and then we get this close-up view of uh, Michael and Bonnie and Kit. This is the new hero car for Season 3. Um, and we can see it's got a nice form-fitting overhead console here. We can also see some adhesive right here covering up our wonderful white wire, unfortunately. It's all glued together. Um, and this is also a neat scene, and one of the rare times that an episode refers to another episode where Michael just says, have I told you lately it's good to have you back? Just, you know, another reference to Patricia McPherson returning. So then Kit turns the corner and parks along this road here, and obviously we're still in the same area here, but this is what it looks like now, right where this truck is, but um, is where he parked. But you can see that this, this building and then this shorter building are all still right there in place. So Kit parks right here. In fact, let's see here. Yep, there's the same fire hydrant right there. All right, moving forward. So is this Elliot Stevens Mazda from Nobody Does It Better? I haven't checked. Why don't you guys check? Is this the same Mazda? It might be, look for the sticker. And sorry, I think I beat you to it. So there's Elliot Stevens Mazda. There is a round sticker there. I can't tell if it's the same one or not. So maybe, maybe not. So a new addition for season three that you may or may not have ever really noticed is this permanent set that they build on stage one. It's designed to look similar to the Foundation for Law and Government. In fact, it was used for flag headquarters a couple of times but this is the premiere of this set now we'll see the set a number of times throughout the rest of season three and season four in halloween night it's it's uh, the set for the foundation where they're decorating for the halloween party uh, for night in disgrace it's boyd lasalle's computer room uh, night of the chameleon it's that basement room in the restaurant where he meets um, to purchase the missiles in Out of the Woods, it's the place where uh, they come in and cut up uh, with the chainsaw, cut up the piano with the chainsaw. Um, Hills of Fire, it's the Foundation's lab where the traction spikes are, are uh, demonstrated. Night Flight to Freedom, it's the Mexican Embassy. Fright Night, um, we see it whenever they're in the in, well, they're actually on stage one, but we see it in the background where there's an SUV parked in it and they're pretending to film a scene in there. Um, Voodoo Night, it's the scene where the the uh, party, Harana's party, is at. So, number of times that this set is used, but this is the very first time. So, another first for um, Knight Rider, this is the premiere, the very first filmed episode where they use the right-hand blind drive car. Um, and this is actually the very first scene it's used in. Now, you may remember in our Night of the Drones commentary, they used the right-hand blind drive car in that episode. But remember, this one was filmed beforehand. Um, there's actually a few episodes filmed before the Ice Band. It's Kit vs. Car, Lost Night, um, that did not feature the right-hand blind drive car at all. So in terms of production order and filming, this is the very first time that they've uh, filmed with this car. And in fact, when we move forward here, one of the the things that they were trying to achieve is for Kit to drive up to Michael driverless. Michael gets in and drives away all without cutting the scene. And that's what you see here. And you see it um, another time in this episode, which we'll point out later. So that was the whole point. They wanted someone in the right-hand side to drive the car up. Michael gets in, takes over control, and drives away. And, and I remember reading uh, an article once where Hasselhoff said, um, he remembers whenever they were first getting used to this car, he would get in the car and it would be a struggle because Hasselhoff wanted to drive, but the stuntman, usually Jack Gill on the other, on the right hand side wanted to drive and they were always fighting for control of, of, uh, the wheel and the gas and the brake. So, but here's the premiere of the right hand blind drive car. For those of you who are not familiar, this is actually the original hero car from the first and second seasons. Now that they have a new hero car for the third season, they repurpose this car to be the right-hand blind drive car and this is one of the five that still exists today and by the way this diamond exchange in the background here's what it looks like now it's this door right here obviously heavily heavily uh, modified since 1984. 
And then we have one of my favorite turbo boosts reused. Uh, this was uh, recycled from second season, Diamonds Aren't a Girl's Best Friend, and we see it again here in the Ice Bandits. This is one of the newer cars for season three. We mentioned it in uh, Night of the Drones. This was actually the car that was being winched into the semi after Kit was destroyed. But this is one of the new stunt cars for the third season. It's very easy to spot throughout most of season three because it has these A, A pillars that are painted tan, as you can see here. And again, these never came tan from the factory. Someone that was, they probably spray bombed the interior of this car. It was a different color than tan. And when they did that, they painted these A pillars as well. And moving forward here, this is still that same car. And you can see it just has the stock Trans Am dashboard at this point um, and a small round steering wheel. And when we move forward again, I always like this because um, whenever, Kit, this is still that same car when Kit hit the base and they're in the LA riverbed. Um, he screwed up this uh, passenger side over here, as you can see. And here's another filming location. Um, this was still, they're still filming in Los Angeles for these scenes. This was Jody's art studio. And this scene was filmed on 3rd Street in Los Angeles. Um, you can see here, see this big garage door, small window, little bigger window and a door. If you look over here, there it is. That was where the garage door was. There's the two doors, there's the two windows, small window, wider window, and the door right there. So, again, looks quite a bit different than it did back then, but those buildings still exist today. And I love this inside the art studio. Michael always wears a leather jacket. He's always got to be so hot. He doesn't wear one in this scene, and his back is dripping with sweat. I guess they shouldn't have put him in such a thin blue shirt for this scene. So here's another stock footage of the original John Ward kit. We saw it in... Night of the Drones, and we see it again. It seems like for a while at the end of season two, they quit showing that stock footage, but now at the beginning of season three, it's it's back. And then here's another scene this where they are filming with a right-hand blind drive car, and they do it without cutting, and this is Michael kind of jumping out of kit while he's still in motion. Again, it's a new, a new gadget that the show has, so they want to show it off as much as they can. They really wouldn't do this too many more times in the series a couple more times but for the most part they start cutting and and changing angles and different things but as far as all in one take one shot without cutting the ice bandits is pretty much it and here's michael going over michael and kit going over the golden gate bridge and yes for all of you who watch night of the drones i realize i said bay bridge i meant golden gate bridge i've been here i know what it is it's the most famous landmark one of the most in the world anyways golden gate bridge and obviously this was filmed for Night of the Drones, so they inserted this shot when they were cutting the episode together later. All right, moving on, we see this side shot of uh, Hasselhoff driving in the insert car. And as we stated previously, the insert car was new for season three. It was a car that was previously never even used on the series. And it's one of two cars that has the split rear seat, as we talked about in our previous episode on Night of the Drones. But one other interesting detail that we see in this angle of the insert car. Take a look at the roof here. All right, now we see a cut here, right? And we see the T-top. But I believe, and I'm 99% sure, that this was actually a hardtop car that they cut to make a working T-top. Because remember, this is the one and only car that ever had an auto roof that actually opened. And if you look here, and if those of you who are familiar with, you know, the early 82 to 84 Trans Ams, you'll see that this is more like a hardtop car, the way this is, than a T-top car. There's no... Uh, a pillar trim and the way this curves around and this does not look like a regular GMT top or even a cars and concepts T top it's it's something totally different so this car was actually a hard top and they cut the roof to allow for um, the auto roof function pretty neat huh and also during this scene um, you know Michael says they're going to Napa he says where wine is king and then Kit replies in French what he's actually saying is the wine is the elixir of love and once again 
the right hand blind drive car gets a lot of screen time in this episode because again they're trying to show it off you can't really see here but there is a dash in this car but it's it's a fake dash right it's just the top shell and then it curves down here and then there's this piece and that's so that they could um install the the chain and sprocket gears that were required to connect the passenger side steering wheel to the actual stock driver side steering wheel and if you can just make out there's this this lighter spot right here what this is this is the location on on factory trans ams for two of the uh hvac vents right those of you familiar with these cars but Whenever they redid this, they actually put an uh, aluminum plate over those, and that's what you're seeing right there. All right, and then we move forward, and this is now the hero car, as you can tell by the dash. And if you look, you can see the reflection of the the uh, lights here, the camera lights, and some of the crew there. And take a look at just how poorly the, the paint job was finished here. You see all the smudges and the swirl marks, and again, it's Hollywood. It was never meant to be seen in Blu-ray 40 years later. So now we arrive at the Asti Winery, um, and this is the location where Jody is staying up in Napa. Um, this is in Cloverdale, California. And um, this building, as you can see here, is it, it looks pretty much the same as it did. Let me bring it over here. There we go, that's how it looks today. So it's pretty much identical as the way it was back in 1984. We talked to Janet Lansbury here um, who played uh, Jody Tompkins. So during this episode's filming, she was known as uh, Janet Julian, but now she's Janet Lansbury, and she actually married the nephew of one of the original producers of the show, Bruce Lansbury. She had a career spanning about 22 years in the, in the entertainment industry, but she always felt she wasn't suited for that business. So she know, she didn't. we talked to her, she didn't remember much about her time on Knight Rider. She said it was never her dream to be an actress. Um, so she, you know, moved on and now um, lives a, a quieter private life. All right. So those of you replica builders who want to redo their interior, um, as some of you know, one of the other things that I do is I sell the reproduction uh, Perella cloth that was used in 1982 Trans Ams and also used in kit. It's a fabric that was obsolete. Now it's not obsolete anymore. But people always ask me, well, sh well, what, do, where do I use this fabric on the cars? And I tell them the front and rear seats and the tops of the door panels down here, which you can just barely see. And they said, well, what do I use for the headliner? And they said, well, you use headliner material, different headliner material. And they said, well, can, can I use Perella cloth on the headliner? I said, sure, why not? Well, take a look at this. This is the third and fourth season hero car, and the headliner is actually covered in Perella cloth right there. So, those of you wanting to recover the headliner in Perella, it is screen accurate, right? And uh, unfortunately, no white wire. This, what you're seeing here, is all adhesive. Um, just that looks like they just kind of sloppily, if that's a word, glued the Perella um, up here to kind of give it a nice finished look. But there you go, Perella cloth on your headliner. But we're not going to leave it there. So, we switched scenes, and now we are in the, the right hand blind drive car, believe it or not. Um, and you can tell that because we still, well, a couple reasons. First, we see um, the season two overhead console, which this car had until the end of the series, actually. And um, we know only two cars had this console, the hero car and the insert car. And we know it's not the insert car because we don't have chrome code hooks here and, and uh, a few other reasons. But what I do want to point out is we've got... A white wire right there there's your white wire not only is it a white wire this is the original white wire right this is the original hero car when we first started pointing out the white wire it was in this hero car and there it still is in the third season white wire alert all right and here's what i was mentioning um again right hand blind drive car another scene where they're having kit drive up michael gets in drives away all without cutting a scene so um i think it's a cool fact but it's it's too bad they didn't continue with that throughout the series all right and then we've got this uh car carrier here this is one of the two i believe carriers that they had to haul the kit cars and other nondescript cars they were using in episodes two 
uh, the set. And uh, we see, we've seen this car carrying a number of episodes. The one that comes to mind right now, we see it in the background of uh, Chariot of Gold. And um, yeah, then we move forward. And there's a sign on the side of it. But underneath this sign, it says Universal City Studios. But And also, uh, obviously, there's a camera truck right here filming all this. And one of the crew members lost their Knight Rider hat right there. So then we move forward and... Kit has now turbo boosted onto the top of the car carrier and uh, we zoom out. This is the hero car that they put up there. And we'll, But when we zoom out, we see that it's actually chained down to the car carrier, which we would expect, right? But um, they didn't make any efforts to kind of hide that. And um, yeah, Hasselhoff was actually up here on the top while the carrier was moving. He even gets out and walks beside it while the carrier is moving. This is not Hasselhoff, though. They cut to a, a stunt double. And also you can see here on um, this car carrier, in earlier scenes, there was just the California license plate here. There's another one on top of it. I can't tell what, what uh, that is. And it looks like the RD of Ford is gone. Probably product placement reasons. They didn't want to um, showcase Ford on a GM show. So they just took the R&D off, would be my guess. Um, yeah, so that's uh, stunt driver there, and then we've got uh, two stunt drivers here. This is definitely not Gianna Julian. Um, I don't know why this stunt woman has pigtails in when Gianna never did. But interestingly enough, this is also a Ford, and they didn't do anything to cover that logo. So, and this is Al Jones uh, driving the the uh, car carrier. He's uh, one of Knight Rider's stunt crew. He was in. He's a background guy in a number of different episodes, and here he is again. So I mean, before, and I always liked this, how Bonnie was putting a five and a quarter inch floppy disk. It looks like she was inserting it where his TV is, where Kit's TV is. But in reality, this version of Kit in the lower console did have a five and a quarter floppy drive. So I guess that's consistent. So Michael is in the winery piecing together uh, Charlie Winter's um, driver's license here. And um, if you zoom in, you can kind of see a few things. So expires on birthday 1986, which isn't that kind of weird that it would expire in two years. But um, so what do we see here? We see uh, Charles Winters, uh, date of birth, September 17th, 1947. And that's about all you can see. The rest of it's kind of jumbled. 190. Looks like his weight is 190. Anyways. So we move forward, there's Al Jones again. Now he's a monk in the background. See, he just shows up everywhere. And then fake Michael's getting injected with something. Clearly not Hasselhoff right there. I don't know why they needed a stunt double for that. But, and we get a great look. This is one of the few times in the series we get a close-up of the comlink. And it's been a while since we've seen a close-up of, of the uh, comlink. We'll see it again in, um, I think, the next episode, Knights of the Fast Lane, right? Um, and this one is a little bit different than the season one versions we've seen in the past. This one looks like it has much more texture to it, um, but it's still the same uh, base model radio that they use. All right, and just like in Night of the Drones, here's the stock nose kit once again. Um, still kind of a mystery as to the purpose, you know, why this car wasn't given a proper Knight Rider nose. We do have this uh, behind the scenes from this episode shot of this particular car. Um, doesn't really provide us any more clues, but it is kind of neat to see it uh, somewhat up close. And not to get off topic, but we also have a couple other behind the scenes shots that I thought this would be good to show you now. So this is the hero car. Now remember, they're only, what, four episodes into filming season three in terms of the production order. Look at how much wear the hero car dash already has. We've got a hole in the center. We've got wear here. Um, you know, these, again, these are props. These weren't made to be seen up close. You know, any dash up close shots are the insert dash. But if you look down below here where the radio should be, this black box is actually the scanner controller for this car. So you see here there's an on-off switch. We've got a bar graph to show the scanner on the inside and a knob to adjust the speed. And we've got the window switches on the arm of the Knight Rider lower console. And then this is another behind the scenes. This was taken at um, in front of Jody's art studio. And what else do we have here while we're doing this? Yeah, there was a birthday party here for someone. I don't know who. But um, during the filming of, of uh, this episode. 
And then there was this uh, newspaper article about uh, filming at uh, up in Napa Valley, so you can read that down there. All right, so then we see Kit, uh, after he's crashed through the winery wall, breaks the vow of silence. Um, this is the, um, the, the new T-top stunt car with the tan A-pillars, as you can see here. We do get um, a little close-up shot here where you can see there's no overhead console. It is a T-top car. And you see this part right here. I don't think this is a white wire. I think this is part of the, the structure of the roof showing the metal structure which leads me to believe this car was probably white or silver originally but um, yeah that's that uh, tan a pillared stunt car so then we come out and now we're at the left hand blind drive car even though this isn't this car isn't being left hand blind driven and if you look in here the only way the only way we know that from the scene because it's kind of blurry is we get a look at the season two dashboard here so that tells us this is the the uh, left-hand blind drive car. So moving forward, now we're in the hero car. We get this point of view shot of of um, Michael, and hard to see here. You'll we'll point it out in other episodes. But one way to tell this car if you can't see the dash is they just had a screw in instead of a coat hook right here where there should be a coat hook. And also um, you can see here that the pod electronics have fallen out and they're hanging by the wires right now. That's what that is right there. So let me move forward. This is the left-hand blind drive car again with the T-top off, and you can really see the bulk in the seat with the T-top off. And when we move forward here, you see the dual screens of the Season 2 Hero Dash, which again is now in this car. So um, anytime, I've said this before, anytime you see the 2TV Dash in Season 3 and 4, um, you know, beyond like Kit vs. Car and Lost Night, except for those two episodes, anytime you see the 2TV Dash, it's the left-hand blind drive car. And there's a better look here where, uh, you know, Michael's pulling Charlie out and throwing him on the hood. There's a better look here. And you can even see the round stunt wheel. It's a telescopic wheel that um, is actually out further than the stock wheel. You can see how far back it is. And that's so the blind driver could reach the steering wheel from the back seat. All right, guys, that wraps up the Ice Bandits. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next time, we're going to cover Knights of the Fast Lane. Lots of interesting things going on in that episode, so hopefully you'll join us for that. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. And now, while we listen to Joe's selection of Knight Rider music that we received directly from Don Peak himself, we'd like to thank these Patreon supporters. Look at you guys scrolling up the screen to my right. Wait a minute, how can you tell which side is my right since you can't see me because I'm not on camera? Oh well. You know what I mean. We are featuring these fine supporters at our Knight Rider Prop Restorer level. Thank you very much for your support. And for those of you at the Knight Rider History Hunter level, we're recognizing you right now in the description. Now, if you enjoyed seeing this golden nugget of Knight Rider history being rescued from obscurity, then please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support would empower us to bring you even more of these historical nuggets we are the Night Rider Historians. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye bye.